Welcome to Electron Online, and here is the last segment of our introduction to electromagnetic radiation. And this time we're going to talk about the pressure of light. It turns out that electromagnetic radiation, which light is part of, actually can induce pressure whenever it lands on the surface. And we're trying to figure that out and, and so mathematically see how that works. So imagine we have a volume here, we'll call this volume dV certain amount of volume, it has a certain amount of length dx, it has a cross-sectional area A, it's filled with electromagnetic radiation, and that radiation is moving at the speed of light C, which we can write as dx dt. If we now again define the change in the momentum per unit volume, or the momentum contained within this volume per unit volume, and we know that that's equal to the magnitude of the pointing vector divided by the, C of, uh, the speed of light squared. And remember, the magnitude of the pointing vector is equal to the intensity of sunlight, which can be defined as 1 over mu sub naught times E times B divided by C squared, and we define that as the momentum contained within this unit volume. Now, just as a reference, if we have momentum with an object that has mass, remember that P is equal to M times V, and dP the change in momentum is equal to the change in mv. Now typically, the, if mass is being applied, let's say we have a, an, an ejection of water onto a wall, then that water, as it hits the wall, will, will put pressure on the wall will, because there's a change in momentum of the water against the wall. And so over time, mass will be projected onto the wall. So it's the amount of mass per unit time that will be projected onto the wall at a velocity v. v is the velocity at which the water hits the wall. And so we can say that dB dt is dm dt times v. And if we then divide both sides of the equation by area, we now have an equation that says 1 over the area times dB dt is equal to the amount of mass we put onto the wall per unit time, the velocity at which we put on the wall per unit time, and uh, and if we say per unit area, we have to divide it by, of course, the area. Now, if you remember the concept of impulse. Impulse is force applied on an object over amount of time, and that then, of course, equates to the change in momentum. If we now divide both sides of the equation by tt, we can then say that f is equal to dp dt. And then if we then multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over a, times 1 over a, we can then see that um, 1 over, uh, f over a, which is of course the units of pressure, f over a, is equal to the change of momentum over time, and of course the change of momentum over time can be written as dm dt times v times 1 over a. So what we've done here is by using the concept of impulse and the concept of momentum with objects that have mass, we can then say that the equation that has 1 over the area times dp dt is equal to this quantity right there. And you can see that that quantity is equal to f over a, which is the units of pressure. So in the same way, we should be able to calculate the pressure of light, of electromagnetic radiation, by simply saying pressure is equal to force over area, and it's equal to this equation right there. And that equation is equal to 1 over A times dP dt. So coming back over here to the light, we now see that we have something in terms of dP expressed in terms of the intensity of light times 1 over C squared. So if we now multiply both of the equation by dV, we can then say that dP is equal to, um, let's just say, um, s, and instead of s, yeah, I'll write it s over c squared, um, like that, which is equal to, and times dv, like so. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking just this part of the equation, I move my dv over here, and now remember that s is simply the intensity of sunlight, so dp can be written as the intensity divided by c squared times dv. Now dV, in terms of what we have here, we have a certain amount of volume called dV with sunlight contained within it. We can say that dV is equal to the cross-sectional area times dx, so it can be written as a times dx. So we're going to replace dV by the a times dx, so dP is equal to i divided by c squared. Instead of dV, we're going to write a times dx. All right. Now we're going to divide both sides by dt, so I'm going to divide the left side by dt, and I'm going to divide the right side by dt, and then remember that dx dt is equal to the speed of light right here, so that means we can now take this equation, we have dp over dt, 
VP. And I should not have written it as a big P because that's going to get confusing. We like to use small p for momentum, so the amount of momentum imparted per unit time is equal to I divided by C squared times A times the speed of light. And um, then if we put the A on the other side of the equation, so we divide both sides by A, we can now write that 1 over A times dP dt is equal to I over C squared times C. So simply I took the A and put it down here, and of course this C and this C squared cancels, and we have that. And so we have 1 over A times dP dt is equal to I divided by C. Now remember, this looks very familiar. If we then go back over here and we look at it over here, we can say that 1 over A dP dt is equal to the change in mass per unit time times velocity one, times 1 over A, which we determined was equal to the force per unit area, which of course are the units of pressure, which means that this is equal to this is equal to the pressure of the electromagnetic radiation. And so this shows that the pressure of electromagnetic radiation can be found by simply saying it's the intensity of the light divided by the speed of light. So P, and there's so many P's floating around, so I'll just go ahead and say this is P representing pressure, is equal simply to the intensity of the light divided by the speed of light. And that's, of course, an easy equation, but you may say, well, how in the world do we know that? This is why we know that. And so that concludes our introduction to electromagnetic radiation, where you can calculate the momentum, the intensity, the power, the, um, the pressure, and so forth. So hopefully this will give you a good introduction, and in the next so many videos, don't know yet how many, I still have to make them, uh, I'll show you some examples of how to utilize all these various equations.